Hi everyone and thanks for tuning in. It's been a little while since I made an appearance, so here I am. As you appreciate, it's been a really, really busy time. We're literally right in the middle of summer on the longest days nearly upon us. That's quite scary. I for one would be glad for shorter days. Perhaps not winter days, but slightly shorter, as I'd quite like to have a rest. Can you believe it's nearly nine o'clock and it won't get dark here, at least for another hour or two. I would like to say thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel. We're really moving on up and it's great to have you with me on this journey. I think there are just over 6,200 of you now. And it's incredible to think just a few weeks ago there was hardly anybody. So please consider subscribing if you haven't done already. It really helps my channel grow. So onto this video now. Unfortunately, there have been some delays for a couple of reasons. Firstly, we had a charity open day at the Old Manor House, which was very successful and it took a lot of hard work to get it looking really nice for the visitors. And the other one is not long after that, somehow I hurt my back and I don't know what happened, but if you had seen me last week, I was crawling around on the garden behind me. I could hardly stand up, but fortunately I've had it seen too and it's very much better. So I'm really glad for your support. So in this video, you'll be seeing the second part of the summer transformation. All of the spring bedding and bulbs have gone or have been put into storage and all the summer bedding plants are now almost in place. Of course, I'm never quite there yet, but there's a little bit more to do. So the walls are being painted, the wood's being stained and everything's nicely arranged and it's starting to look really, really pretty and it'll continue to look so right on into August, September and maybe October if we have a mild um, end of the summer. So I hope you'll enjoy seeing the pots we, that's mum and I, have created. You can tell me if you prefer mum's pots or mine, but please bear in mind the ones I planted were doing about two weeks ago. So they're a little bit um, smaller, but it's still time to fill out. So here we go. You'll see a bit more of me in the video. I'll do some more voiceovers as well. So happy gardening. I literally couldn't believe how dirty the walls had become. You kind of get used to seeing things as they are, but as soon as you start to paint them, you realise how it was looking. And now it looks absolutely beautiful and bright and shiny. And actually the brightness of the paint reflects a lot of light back in. So it really does help the plants grow and it also makes the house quite a lot brighter too. So here I am choosing which plants to put in which places. I had quite a few to choose from but I thought I'll just stop them around and see how they looked and then maybe move them about again later until I was happy with the arrangement. putting my pots together I always use peat free compost. Now you may have to go around a few different places to find the variety of compost you like best because some of them are really terrible and some are really good. Now one I'm using here is called Levington's, it's peat free and it has a real nice um, structure to it. Some of them are made from rock wool and all kinds of bits of rubbish so you really have to be careful as they don't always hold nutrients very well. So I tend to put in some extra food as well with the granular feed.
compost in the pots is kind of repurposed. I don't always empty the pots and replace all the compost, basically because it's very expensive and I can't really afford to do that. So what I do is I just top up the compost, check for any problems of course before that, look for vine weevils and insects in the compost, pull any detritus out, and then I just top it up and put in some granular feed. This basket liner has been in for a couple of years and it was a real nice green to start with but it fed into this really really vivid green which didn't look very nice so I thought it was time to replace it. Now when I went to the garden centre I couldn't remember what size the basket was and normally they sell round ones so I thought I oh, know I'm just going to buy a big rectangular piece of the liner which will be useful for other projects too I'm patching up some of the wall planters. So I've got this one and I've put the old liner on and just cutting around it to make it fit. And it does really well. And the off cuts are really useful. You poke around the garden and the birds like to use them for the nesting materials. The most important thing when you're making a basket is to hold it up in front of you with these chains and find out which way it hangs on the hook where you're going to be putting it. And then you make sure that the facing side of the basket is towards you and you put your plants in according to that. Because otherwise you can hang your basket up and all the nice plants where you wanted them swing round to the wrong side or the face of the wall. So it's a really good idea to do that. I 
would recommend placing the plants in your basket before you actually put them in just to see how the colours look and work together to see you've got the trailing plants around the edge and not in the middle and I always tend to put something upright in the middle so it gives the basket a little bit of height and then you can see how it looks and if you're happy then you can put them in. So here I am putting the basket in place, just going to check to make sure it's in the right position and it's facing forwards and the plants are all neatly in place, just mind the wires so they don't get caught in those. Now the plants will fill out and start to trail and it does look a little bit bare at the bottom but I'm sure you'll agree in a few weeks it will look absolutely beautiful. And here we are, here are all my summer bedding plants put into the pots. They've got plenty of time to grow now and they're already starting to knit together as you can see from the previous clip. I dotted a few hostas here and there to fill in the spaces and I think in a few weeks it's really going to look lush, just like a little tropical jungle which is the kind of effect I'm going for. Here we have mum's pots and she planted these a little bit of time before, maybe a couple of weeks before I did mine and you can see they've knitted together really well. The colours she's chosen are pinks, mauves and a little bit of peach and I think they look really beautiful together and I really like the petunia which is called Ruby Glow.
Here I have planted three trailing apricot begonias into the walled trough. Nothing else much will grow there because it's quite dark, but they really thrive in the dark conditions, as long as they're well watered. And there we have it. So you've seen mum's pots and my pots. Actually, I think they're both just as nice as one another. And they do tie together because they've used some of the same plants in both of the displays. I really hope you've enjoyed watching today. And I thank you for your friendship, your support, and all your lovely comments. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks and bye.